you have to have a firm foundation because it's not if you go through troubles, it's when. Then you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Do you believe in life after addiction? You better believe it. Now, the host of Life After Addiction. Hey, 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 hey. What you gonna do and what you gonna... Okay, here we go. Come on, come on, come on. Here we go. Focus. It is another episode of Life After Addiction. And man, the last two, man, I felt were really good. Yeah, really good. Spirit of the Lord was moving. Spirit of the Lord was moving. And I think next week you're gonna have a very special guest, but you're gonna have to tune in for that. Um, Yeah, I'm excited about that. So we've picked the person to get the second gift card um, and I apologize to the first person, I don't remember your name, but we're just going to mail them out at the same time. Um, and so this person, <laughs> this rascal, uh, and the way we did it was the comments of last week and we put their names into uh, wheelofnames.com, which randomly you type the names in it randomly spins and lands on someone. Uh, but we know who this person is. Uh, it is Justin Hawkins. He commented on, uh, he won. And so Justin, in order to receive your card, we need you to email info at spring, the number two life dot net with your mailing address, and we will get those out. We'll send both of them out. This is Friday, uh, May. What's this date? May Friday, May fifth, mm, something like that. Sixth. May so, 5th, baby. so they should go out today or, or tomorrow. Um, but yeah, so we are men of our word. We, we got the two $100 gift cards out. Uh, yeah. And the channel's growing. We're excited. Um, yeah. How you doing, man? I'm doing good. Thank you guys for the support, for the comments. Congrats on winning the contest. Um, it's, it's cool to see our audience grow and our listeners and yeah. viewers grow and, um, it's cool that y'all are along this journey and, and a part of this ride with us. Yeah, yeah. What you got? What what are you, what are you doing there? I love baseball, and so I've been going to a lot of Vanderbilt baseball games. I've been going to a lot of Nashville Sounds games. Okay. I actually just went to an MTSU baseball game okay. uh, the other day. So I'm a baseball fanatic. You like Vanderbilt over MTSU baseball? Uh, yeah. I mean, the level of play is whoa, 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 whoa. Night and day. Whoa, whoa, wee, whoa. Yeah. Okay. The uh, level I mean, of play is night and day. Okay. Well, I mean, I have dear friends yeah. that have played for MTSU. It's not a personal thing. Well, just you, the level of play is, <laughs> you know. Well, he he went on to play in the major leagues. <laughs> right. So I mean, that's pretty leveled up. Yeah. You know what I mean? If you were to look at draft picks from each school, though, sure. it would highly outweigh the other. Mm, okay. Maybe you got me there. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you got me there. All right, man. Today, kind of wanted to talk about. Um, and again, that what we found and as, as, as Chittister, Chitty and I have, have kind of grown in this podcast, a lot of times early on, we were very, um, researched and knew what we were going to talk about for weeks. Structured. And structured. And that's a good thing. But we've also found that the Lord really moves when we briefly discuss, and it's just organic for you to kind of join in the yep. conversation. And so just a few minutes before I, I threw this idea out, and then we started, we pressed record and we started going. And so here's what we want to talk about. And it, it's based on uh, a sermon that I listened to uh, this weekend. Uh, my mentor, Pat Hood, um, as a lot of you know, because we've talked about it on the podcast, his wife passed away suddenly six months ago. And it's been a really hard, um, early on, it was really hard for me to see him so broken and walk with him. Not hard for me, like how much harder is it for him, for him and his family. And I loved his wife too. And so mourning her, but just to see a man of, you know, my mentor and it's just so crushed. It was, it was, an, it was something I'd never experienced before. Right. And so and I don't want to make it about me and how hard it was, but I mean, it was some. it was interesting to watch and I got to watch him suffer. And so Sunday was six months to the day of his wife's passing, and um, he was just talking. He was preaching on um, the parable of the builders and their firm foundation. He was just able to express, he goes, I'm in just such a radically different place than I was six months later, and it was all because of my foundation, of, of, of my foundation in God, his word, the fellowship and things like that. And he really broke it down, and I thought it was 
now I just think it's important for us to talk about. We, we believe in a foundation. We talk about um, at S2L, the four pillars, just kind of a practical thing for you to do every single day. And we've talked about on this podcast, go back and look at our pillars series. Um, and I don't know today, I think it's important to recast that vision that the reason that we teach the pillars is not because we're Bible thumpers, not because, uh, it sounds correct to do, but it's, it's practical things that God tells us to do. Uh, and it, and it helps in the storm. Mm-hmm. It's it's literally a foundation for you to do as Pat did. He he said in his sermon uh, Sunday. You know he he just went to the Word. The only thing he knew to do in that moment. And I mean I was at his house the that day. Uh, I was at his house the night before, uh, and Amy was joking around with us. We were watching football in the garage, and then that day and seeing him and he just said the only thing I could do. Six months removed, he was reminding us is to go to the God's Word. I didn't want to. It was the only thing I knew to do. That was my foundation was to go into God's Word. And he went to the book of Job. And if you've never read the book of Job, it's just a, it's just a book of suffering, uh, faithfully suffering, uh, and, and leaning into God in times when even others maybe were telling you to curse God. Mm. And I don't know. It, stuck, it stirred something in me to maybe bring this up today. Um, and remind the people listening that you have to have a firm foundation because it's not if you go through troubles, it's when. And you're either coming out of a season of struggle or you're about to go into one, right? That's what I know in this fallen world. You're either coming out of a season of, of, of suffering or struggle or whatever, or you're about to enter one, yeah. right? That's just the thing on this side of glory, on this, in this broken world, sin has broken this world. That, so that's where it is. That's what's going to happen. And it is so radically important for us as believers, not just people in recovery, but us as believers to know that our foundation is firm in Christ. And that is your default. That is what you turn to. You should turn to that in good times, and you absolutely should have that as such a discipline, such a foundation of your life that that's all you know to do in bad times. Thoughts on that? Yeah. Yeah, it's important. And that's a good word. Um, you know, we were, we're in the book of John right now at experience. Um, and, you know, these biblical principles and these these uh, things that we teach, you say, you know, um, we, we teach them. And not only because we, we know they work, but because it's God's word ultimately. And Jesus himself says, if you love me, you will keep my yeah. commands. Yeah. And so this is what st- sustains us and gives us life. Um, but something that really stuck out to me, we we're in the staff meeting. I don't remember if it was last week or the week before that, but um, Pastor Ron touched on Galatians 6, 9, you know, do not grow weary in doing good for in due season you will reap if you do not give up. And man, that's so huge. Obviously, yeah. a, a word for our staff, uh, just in addiction recovery ministry, we see a lot. Um, it's not for the faint of heart. Um, yeah. We're always dealing with guys and families in the darkest seasons of their lives. But even to to believers alike, with whatever your occupation is, wherever you're at in life, if you're a stay at home mom, if you're a dad who works, you know, a nine to five, um, man, we can become weary very easily. This world is hard. Life is difficult. Raising kids, you know, sustaining a marriage, paying bills, stewarding, you know, your responsibilities well. Life is just very difficult. And I think it's so easy for us um, to try and take that control back and take the reins of life back and do it ourselves apart from um, pressing in to our relationship with Christ. Mm -hmm. And it's so easy to rely on your own understanding and rely on your own strength and rely on your own willpower. Um, And I think once you do that um, over and over again, God will humble you very quickly (laughs) and he'll bring you back to the source of life. Um, And I feel like that's natural for all of us to do it. Now, I think the stints in which you rely on self should become less and fewer and uh, more far in between, but it happens to each of us. Um, like Pastor Ron said, it says it in here, do not grow weary in doing good because we're going to grow weary. Yeah. Like we are going to grow weary at times. It is inevitable that we're going to grow weary at times, but it's a constant reminder to go back to the source of life. And ultimately it is the word of God. You know, um, if you want to hear God's voice, you read his word. If you want to hear God's voice out loud, you read his word out loud. 
That's yeah. how you know God. That's, that's how you develop a relationship <laughs> with God. Um, that's how you um, just sustain in life in general. You know, um, we talked about it a few weeks ago, but even um, Jesus's high priestly prayer in John 17, 17, sanctify them in the truth. Your word is truth. Yeah. The process of sanctification directly is derived from being in God's word and allowing the living, breathing word of God to renew your mind and transform your heart and make you ultimately more like Christ. And so whenever we get away from that, you're going to feel a distance from God. You're going to feel like he's not hearing your prayers as much. You're going to feel more down and out. You're going to feel more weary naturally because, man, that is how we sustain is by being in his word. And like you said, fellowship and prayer and Christian community and um, all these things are extremely important. But being reminded that um, just to do not grow weary in doing good for in due season, you will not give up. I don't know. Like you hear that and you hear a lot of people say it, but sometimes when God gives you revelation on something, it just touches you in a deeper, more profound of, of ways. Yeah. Yeah, man. And, and I think, I think like you're saying, <laughs> then you'll know the truth and the truth will set you free. Mm. And we're talking about freedom all the time, but it also says thy word is true. Thine word is truth. Later on, I believe in the same passage, uh, it talks about my disciples will obey. My disi- you will know my disciples if they b- listen and obey my word. They do the things that I'm teaching. And I, my scripture I want to talk about is from the book of Exodus, chapter 24. And Moses is uh, coming and speaking with God and comes down in verse 7. And then he took the book of the covenant and read it to the people. They responded, we will do everything the Lord has said. We will obey. And it's so important. I mean, I think the mark of who a Christian is, according to Jesus, when he says, these are my disciples, the disciples know and follow my word. Uh, and, and by no means can and do I do that perfectly. Uh, but man, I, I want to be to know that I am a Christ one, a Christian. That Jesus says that you do what I say. Mm. Uh, you're obedient. Um, it's not a very popular thing. Uh, I don't even think the word obedient is is is. It's probably a, a, a bad word in today's culture, right? Because everyone's free. I'm a free spirit. I'm no one. I don't. I don't have to listen to anything. My truth is my truth, and but just the obedient. And I think of my children. I'm talking to my kids. Uh, we had a meeting at at uh, with the with the kid children's pastor with Ella because we're trying to schedule her baptism and just talking about, you know, what what does it mean to be a Christian, and just the, the from the mouth of babes, right? Uh, that. that I do what Jesus tells me to do, that he's my boss, you know, and obviously, you know, she's hearing me talking to her and explaining the gospel and those kind of things, but to hear her asked by a pastor, a children's pastor, and this is just to watch and not like, not feel like I have to be like, you know this, you know this, come on, it's it, get, get an A on the quiz and just sit back and watch like from them talking and stuff like that. And it was like that Jesus is my boss and I obey him. Mm. It's so simple. And, and, how do you know what he's telling you to do? As you just said, be in his word. Like, let that be your foundation. In good times, when you're on the mountains, and obviously we turn to it when we're in the valleys. And why? Why are we so adamant about that? Is it because we, we think it's cool to talk about these four pillars or um, to, to make people obedient to something? No, because it's practical, man. Like, Gosh, I mean, some of the darkness that that we've seen, some of the, the and you've seen, if you've lived in this world long enough, man, I'm so thankful that I don't have to turn to a pill when the going gets tough, because those pills are expensive, and those pills are liars, and those pills only last for a moment. I'm so glad that I could have a firm foundation in something that's eternal, that, um, Gets my gets my spirit in a place that no matter what happens today, I know that God says that come to me all who are heavy laden, and I'll give you rest for your soul. And that if I do that, if I obey and I walk, He's He's not going to take me from this trial. He's not going to take me from this suffering. He's not going to take me from the storm. But He's going to be there in it. He's going to walk with me. He's going to. I'm going to know that my foundation is in Him. And even if I'm killed today, even if a sickness takes me today, even if the man that hates me shoots me today, to die is gain. Like think about that. Like you think about that. There's (laughs) when Jesus disarmed the devil's biggest weapon, which was sin and death. Man. 
if you really root yourself in these promises, there is nothing that can happen to you that that matters. Like to live is Christ, but to die is gain. And I mean, Pat knows. I mean, Pat didn't want to hear early on. I mean, he know the truth, but to come up to a man who or a woman who just lost a loved one and just to continuously say, oh, they're in a better place. Yeah, they know. But now as he's rooting, he's like, man, Amy is gaining right now. Amy is with God. Amy was a faithful servant of Christ and with him forever now. She would not choose to return, even for her kids or anything. She's with God. I don't know. I don't really know. <laughs> yeah. I'm just passionate about that. Like, if we could really just root our mindset, Christians, like, stop being so busy. Stop being so, um, I don't know, stop being so distracted and remind yourself thy word is truth, and the truth will set you free. Yeah, I think a big thing for me that I've I've learned is is not to to move based off of emotion. Um, being still is one of the most difficult things to do, especially in our society today. Like we're always yeah. on the go, we're always you know just almost microwave Christians, and just like when I want to feel this way, I want to feel it now. When I want to be blessed, I want it now. When I want God to answer my prayers, I want it now. Um, and it, it gets us ahead of God. And and when you're able to be still and really trust and know that He is God. Um, a lot of the anxiety and fears and doubts and these things that consume us, man, um, God really works those out as you press into him. But it even goes back to kind of what we talked about yesterday is keeping our minds set on the things that are above and not on things that are on earth. Um, and it guards our hearts in the Lord. Um, Something for me especially is whenever I get caught up in my emotions and I get consumed by, you know, thoughts about the future, anxiety, stresses, where I think I should be, how many years I wasted in addiction, things that I've, you know, blown up in my life that shouldn't be that way. Um, I'm reminded of just how present he was all along the way. Yeah. And just how every step of the way in my life has brought me to where I'm at today. And I wouldn't be here had it not been for the process and everything that I went through. Like yeah. I would not be sitting here doing a podcast. I wouldn't be working at S2L. I wouldn't be discipling men. I wouldn't be teaching. I wouldn't be doing the things that he has me doing because this was never Ryan's plan. Yeah. Like this was not my plan. Yeah. Nowhere in Norm, my life's Norm plans mind. was God a part of it. I know that sounds bad. It should have been right. It just, it wasn't. Yeah. I didn't grow up, you know, doing these things, learning about these things, even having a desire for these things. And we're not even able to seek God apart from him initiating it. So I'm grateful just for even that in and of itself and to have a desire to honor God, to have a desire to please God. Even in, I'll give an example of just godly dating now. I share it with you. Like the way I even go about dating is drastically different than I would have ever done before. But it's because of, of how I put my relationship with Christ first and how adamant I am yeah. about maintaining Your and foundation. growing and sprinkling, you know, um, that relationship so that, man, it can continue to grow. Yeah. I don't want to I don't want to talk about it this episode because I think we'll talk about it in the future. And it's probably deserves a, an entire episode. But even just something, um, a fruit of you being um, attached and building your your. Uh, life on a firm foundation of God's word, his promises, your obedience to him. Uh, I watched Chitty walk through something recently um, that is probably historically has been his biggest kryptonite in his life. Yeah. And the way that you walk, (laughs) I'm going to get a little emotional. That's weird. The way that you walk through it is absolutely what I'm talking to y'all about. Uh, my, I don't oh, I'm sorry. And he just ruined a moment. I'm sorry. Go I, I ahead, almost go had, ahead, a, tear. Go ahead, go ahead, almost go had a tear worked up coming down. I mean, and, and Jordan was going to zoom in and he was going to start playing music in the background of this moment. But the way that you dealt with it, man, is the absolute fruit of what we're talking about, of having your foundation secured on solid ground uh, of godly things, the things that are above his word. Um, it blew me away, man, because it was your biggest kryptonite in this moment that happened. I don't know, man. It was just, uh, it, and we'll talk about it at some point. Um, 
but it was so cool. It was such fruit of having a firm foundation, yeah. you know? Yeah. So. It's something, so we can, we can do an episode on it. Cause I think it'd be really cool. I think oh, a lot man. of people. Let's devote a whole episode to it. Yeah. 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 A lot of people could learn from it. I'm not going to touch on it any further, but <laughs> the lessons he's taught me and whether it's about myself um, or just dating in general or certain fears that I had and certain insecurities and doubts and yeah, that's a whole, I could go down a yeah. tangent, but it was, it was really, man, it's given me a whole new area in my, my relationship with Christ that I've been able to grow and yeah. learn more about him. And in the whole time of pursuing a spouse, he's been drawing me closer to him. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, it's crazy. And so, I mean, if you're, if you're watching this twofold, um, for those of, um, let's say family members, uh, because uh, you know, we know that you still watch this and you're checking out the hope after addiction podcast that's aimed for the, the families. Uh, but for the families listening to this, um, your firm foundation in Christ is going to come in a way that I pray I never have to experience with my children, uh, with my loved ones. Um, your firm foundation is you're trusting God in the midst of chaos for someone that you just want to help. Like you don't know how to help, uh, and you see them dying, like they're daily, they're just dying. And so my hope, my, my words to you is you have to be firm in your foundation of Christ, be in his word, trust in who he says he is. Um, and, and, you know, I said this the other day, um, at the forgotten pandemic conference that we did, Mm -hmm. man, you know, you could do everything right and, and you still might lose a loved one. Um, that's the full counsel of what I'm telling you. I'm not going to, I'm not going to just say the things that are fun and say, yeah, just do this, these steps and have these boundaries and man, it's going to work. It might not. But what I'm telling you, and I can confirm, and I do promise you that if you are firm in your foundation and you are seeking God and you are taking good godly wisdom, there is hope. There is hope on all sides. There is hope. Now, um, to you who's suffering and struggling and thinking that there'll never be another day that you won't take that drink or take that drug, man, I've been there too. And it was, it was the moment, um, that God crushed me that changed my life forever. And it was suffering. Stop running from the crushing. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. Stop running from the crushing. You have to take your mask off. It wasn't until I felt the weight of my own sin. And I call, I I believe I'm describing that perfectly because I believe God crushed me and I felt the weight of my own sin and it was no longer everyone else's fault and it was no longer, you know, whatever. And I saw that for myself. It was when God showed me who he was and that he crushed his son. Sphagy is the word, a slaughter. And the Sphagy in Greek, he literally translates to he slaughtered his own son for that sin. And he now sees you as perfect and spotless and blameless. And you are adopted child into his family. And, and when you grow in that and you have that firm foundation, you'll be able to tackle these issues like I'm talking about the Chitty did, like I'm talking about the Pastor Pat did with his wife. And they're not easy. They're not fun. And you might not have a smile on your face, but you'll know that they will be uh, rest for your soul. You know that he'll be with you and he's growing you. The Bible says that all things work for the good of those who love God and are called according to his purposes. The Bible does not say that all things are good. But in the midst of this horrible thing, if you have a firm foundation, you know that this horrible thing, God is going to work for your good. And I might not be able to, to, you might not be able to understand what that good is now. Pat, six months removed, still doesn't know how the, God's working this for his good, right? He's growing and he's, he's in a different place, but, he, but that's a promise of God. All things work together for your good, for those who are called according to his purposes, who love God and are called according to his purposes. Yeah, that's a good word because, man, I, I've been told before many times in life, I don't need to know the why when I know the who. 
<laughs> you don't need to know the why when you know the who. And I think we get so caught up in asking why this, why that, when something happens in my personal life, when something's happened in my family, when, you know, something's happened to a friend, we always want to know why, 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 why. But we have to go back to God's word and remember that, uh, man, he is sovereign. He is in control of all things. And you may not see the good in every situation. You may not s supposed to see the good in every situation, but yeah. you can still trust and know that God is good and he is working those things out for our greater good um, and with the purpose. But that's a word I would give anybody listening is you don't need to know the why when you know the who. There's going to be many things that happen in life that you can't make sense of. I couldn't make sense of an addiction for 12 years. There's no possible way that any good could ever come from this there's just nothing there's there's no point in any of this and I was completely wrong yeah I was completely wrong and that happens in so many situations in life and where we get devastated and we become distraught and you know we start to doubt and get frustrated and then you look back and it's like oh my gosh I was so blind in that season like God was right there next to me yeah. the entire way and the more you know you can go back to your faith bank and make deposits and see his faithfulness and you can look back on those times in your life and realize I remember going through very similar situations in the past, and all I need to do is be still and remember to trust Him. Yeah, and go back and watch last episode because he said faith bank. Uh, and last episode we talked about why are we thankful to God, and man, those are so important, and we so easily forget them. Like the thing that we're talking about that we're going to talk do a whole podcast, mm -hmm. man, that is something that I think you put in your faith bank, and man, you're an untouchable for a while. What is the enemy going to do to you? No. You know what I mean? What is he going to say to you? You know what I mean? And that same thing with you. Like, how is the enemy going to whisper um, murderous accusations at you if you've repented, confessed, and you've brought darkness into the light and the darkness had to flee? How is the enemy going to whisper in your ear if your foundation was strong and you just saw yourself go through a season in a way that you never have? Man, you're kicking the devil in the teeth in those things. I'm not saying this is easy, but I'm telling you, it's the way. It's the way that you could go through this life. And I'm not saying you're not, I've already said it. It's not if you're ever going to have a storm. You're either in one now or you're about to be. And God is with us and he's given us the tools. And it's not turning to an idol of uh, a job that you're drowning yourself in for 80 hours, 90 hours, and that's your identity. It's not... Uh, a bottle of alcohol or pills. It's not a screen that has dopamine hits because you're seeing naked men or women. It's his word. And you go through these things and he's doing something in the storm. I've heard this and I'm going to butcher the quote, but it's just common sense. Man, if you're, you're not growing, if you're not in a storm, think about it. If everything's fine in your life, Man, you don't get challenged. You don't have growth unless you are going through these things. So that verse that all things work for the good starts to make a little bit more sense. You grow when you are in the valley, not on the mountain. So think this thing. Be wise, Christians, because honestly, we're going to do an episode <laughs> in the future about the, the state of the union, the state of uh, humanity in 2023 and just the AI and all this other stuff that's happening. Man, it is a really big opportunity for Christians to be the light of the world and the salt of the earth um, and lead in a righteous way. But if we can't lead our own hearts, man, if we get, if, yeah, that's it. Yeah, I would just leave, leave with uh, be doers of the word and not hearers of your only deceiving yourselves. Yeah. Um, I think it's very easy to hear the word um, and go to church once a week and hear it yeah. and be on fire for 30 minutes to an hour sure. afterwards. Or a and worship then, event or something. Right. Yeah. Um, but man, being a doer of the word, applying the, the wisdom of God's word, applying the words you hear on Sundays, um, applying his word to your daily life is very essential. Be about that life, baby. Come on. <laughs> Close with this. The Word of God says that the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. And that's life after addiction, and you better believe it. Come on. Thank you for listening to this episode of Life After Addiction. Life After Addiction is a production of S2L Studio. For more Christ-centered addiction recovery resources, please visit s2l.net. That's S, the number two, L.net. 
For more information about S2L's licensed and accredited residential program, please visit s2lrecovery.org. That's S, the number two, lrecovery.org.